Hi, welcome to Amigos Code. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to tackle no pointer exceptions with Java optionals. I know in the past, we all done something like this. If a variable not equals to null, then assign it to a value, otherwise assign it to a default value. But that's really a code smell, to be honest. And Java optionals allows us to eliminate all of that and allows us to write clean APIs where any client looking at it knows that a specific field or variable might be nullable or not. And the benefit of that is that we can then use functional programming and have clean code. Without further ado, let's dive into it. All right, so I'm inside of IntelliJ and let's go ahead and learn about optionals. So to use optionals, we simply use optional and then dot. And right here, you can see that we have few methods. So we have optional dot empty and then optional of. So of, it means that you for sure know that the value is not null. And then you also have optional of and then nullable. So this is where you're not sure whether the value will be present. So therefore you can use optional of nullable. So if I go ahead and use optional of empty and extract this to a variable so you can see the keyboard shortcut down below. So if I then south this, so empty, if I run this, you can see that we get an optional of empty right here. Now we have a few methods inside of the optional uh, class and we can find out a few things. So we can go ahead and say is present. So this tells us whether there is a value inside of that optional. We can also say the inverse, so is empty, right? So if I run this, you can see that we get false, so it's not present, and then we get for is empty. Now, if I go ahead and use optional of, and then simply say hello, right? And then this will be an optional of string, and then if I execute this, and now you can see that is present is true, and then is empty is false. So let's go ahead and explore some other methods. So if I say empty and then dot, and then you can see that we have map, and then if present or else is empty, flat map get um, or else. So let's go ahead and use or else. So or and then else. So or else, so this is actually a default value when the value inside of the optional is not present. So hello world. So right here, let me go ahead and extract this to a variable. So or and then else. Now if I south, so if I system dot print line and then or else and run this, you can see that we get hello. And this is because this empty optional is in fact not empty, right? So let me actually rename this to hello like that. And yeah, so hello is not um, empty. So if I go ahead and pass null, and remember I said that optional of null, so this will not work because I'm expecting this to have a value if I use optional of. So if I run this, I just want you to see the actual error. So we get no pointer exception. So when you're not sure whether the value will be nullable or not, you can use optional of and then nullable. Now, if I run this, you can see that hello was empty, right? So it was empty. So right here, so this line returns true and it's present returns false. So it's not present. And then what we did here was we said hello and then or else. So if hello is not present, then we get hello world. So usually if you were not using optionals, you would say, um, um, you know, string and then hello and then equals to null, and then you'd say um, string, and then world. And then basically you would say if, and then something like this, hello, not equals to null, 
and then basically you would you know assign and you can see that this can become really messy nowadays this is too much imperative programming and basically what we want to do is just use declarative programming because uh, there's no way for us to do this code where we have you know the benefits of optionals so then what we could do is use functional programming right because now I do have an option of chaining these methods. So right here, you see that I said or else, but I could actually before or else I could use dot and then map, right? So map allows me to do a transformation on the actual uh, value inside of the optional in case it's present. So if I go ahead and say um, um, string, and then this will be two and then uppercase and right here let's go ahead and pass hello all lowercase if i run this you can see that we get hello and then you know uppercase and because it's present this time we don't get the world part now we could also instead of saying or else we could say or else and then get right here so or else get so this allows us to pass a runnable and inside of oh actually a supplier right so a supplier and inside of this supplier we can have uh, any logic to get a default value so you saw that with or else you simply pass a string but here you can perform some extra computations i'm going to leave a comment here so extra computation to retrieve the value and then at the end, what you need to do is return the value that you've computed. So right here, what I'm going to do is simply, you know, say world again, right? So, you know, you could imagine that world, for example, was in the database. So inside here, you could actually say, you know, go to the database and then fetch the world part in case hello is not there, something like that. So if I run this, you see that we still get hello but because this guy is not empty so if i pass null inside and now you can see that we get world so let's go ahead and learn about some other methods so we could use dot and then or right so or it's pretty much as or else but you can see that we get the option of returning an optional as well right so or else right here we, we we return a string but with or we can return an optional so we could also say or else throw so we could say for example throw an illegal state exception and you could have a custom message there but basically now if i run this you can see that it throws an illegal state exception so this is often when you are for sure that there should be a value in there and for some reason it wasn't. So then you throw an illegal state exception. So let's look at some other methods. So dot, and then we could use um, if present or else, or if present. So let's go ahead and use if present. So if present, so this guy here takes the actual value inside of your optional if it's present, right? So let me go ahead and say simply this is word and then inside so right now we no longer um basically we no longer um getting a string out of it but essentially if i say hello and then you see that if it's present then we get the word so in our case this will be um hello or actually um you'll see in a second but if i pass now word and if I remove that, if I run this, you see that if I indent this properly, you see that we get nothing. And this is because it's no, but if I pass a low and then run this, you can see now we get world. So this is really cool. And we can even change this to a method reference. We could also, so if I delete that, we could also say if present or else right so this is pretty much almost the same so this is word right so we take the word here and then we're going to do the same thing so south and then word but then the second argument is a runnable right so this is the or else part 
So this we could simply say south as well, and then um, world. And if I change this to method reference like that, and I can change this to one line, and there we go. So if I run this, you see that we get a low, but if I pass null inside, you see that we get world. So this is pretty much the basics of using optionals. Now, when I said that you could have um, an API where a client may look at it and know that a specific variable might be null is by using optionals inside of your classes or POJOs, returning methods, and pretty much wherever you think that a class or a value, right, might be null. So as an example, we could do something like this. So if I remove everything from here, so what we could do is, for example, so let's go outside here and create a class, right? And say that this is person. So we know for sure that every person, so let's go ahead and say private, final, and then string, and then name, right? So we know that for sure every person has a name, but we're not sure really if everyone has an email, right? So just let me show you first the bad way of doing it, and then I'm gonna show you how to fix it with optionals. So add that to constructor, and then add the getters, uh, both of them. And then if we go ahead and create a new person, so new person, and this will be James, and then the email will be james at and then gmail.com. And then let's call this um, a person, right? So now I could go ahead and say south, and then person dot, and then get, and then email. And let's say that we want to lowercase this guy, right? So in fact, just let me put all uppercase here. So James, like that. Now, I can run this, and you see that this works, right? But now, if I pass null inside, so null, run this, you see that we get a null pointer exception. So one way to fix this is to let the client know that emails might be nullable. So what we could do is wrap this inside of optionals. So just like that, so the getter. And the return will be optional and then dot of nullable. So this is what you've seen before. So now right here, what we could do is pretty much just use um, dot and then map. So we can map a string and then to lowercase and then or else, or actually or else, and then email not provided, something like this, provided. So we could actually use the person, you know, get name and then say that, you know, James hasn't got an email, for example. But if I run this, and in fact, just let me extract this to a variable so you can see what we're doing. So just like that, email, and then put this like that, and then like that, and a space here, and another one here. So basically, now you see that email is not provided. And if I pass James, so James at and then gmail.com, or this could even be uppercase, and then run this, and you see that the email is lowercase. And finally, one more thing that I forgot to show you is you can use the if present and then unwrap the actual value inside of the optional yourself. So if I comment all of this, so you could do the same thing as uh, by saying um, if and then person dot get email is present, right? So now you know that the email is present. So now to get the actual email, you can say string and then email equals to person dot email or actually get email and then dot and then get. So basically now you are getting the value inside of the optional. And now you could say south and then email dot to lowercase.
right? And then you could have an else branch and then south and then email not provided. So just let me copy this here and then paste it here. And if I run this, you see that we get james at gmail.com, all lowercase. But if I pass no, so basically it's the same thing. So run, you see that we get email not provided. I just want to show you that you can unwrap optionals yourself. And this is how you use Java optionals. As you see, it's very powerful. You can take full advantage by introducing it in your code base and eliminate where no values are likely to be present. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below. Otherwise, make sure to subscribe to my channel to get more videos like this. Also, follow me on my Instagram where the community is growing and join me on the next one. See ya.